Did you know that we should put Jesus first? That's what worshipping is. That's what worshipping is. That's right. My name is Buckle. And my name is Ella. And welcome to The, the Link Show. Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Christmas episode of The Link Show. Today, we're going to learn that we should put Jesus first. And that's what worship is. It's a weird word, worship. Weird word, worship. I said that really. Can you say that? Weird word, worship. We were worship. Weird word worship. We were worship. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> but we're going to be learning all about that later. And we're going to be making our third Christmas bauble, which I'm super excited about. But after we make the crafts, Isla, what are we doing then? We're going to look at your arts and crafts. That's right. We love how talented you are as well. After that, we're going to take a look at the animated Bible story, which is the wise men coming and worshipping Jesus. And then Isla, what's my favourite bit? Do you remember? The Bible quiz. The Bible quiz. Make sure you're paying attention to the Bible story because we're going to do a Bible quiz right at the end. But right now, Isla and I are going to get started on our last Christmas bauble of all the different Christmas story pieces. It looks like this. And while we get started, how about you go check out Breach Part 1. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of the Christmas story. There's still two more weeks after this that we're going to have a bigger look at the whole Christmas picture. But right now we're looking at the wise men. If you've ever seen a Christmas nativity, either at a church or at a Christmas carols, you've got the wise men that come and bring gifts to Jesus. So we're going to take a look at that in just a moment. But before we get to that, I want to talk about a bit of a strange word that you might have heard called worship. You see, if you go to church like I do, you might hear someone on stage say, let's sing the worship songs. Or, you know, that usually just means we're singing some of the slower songs. That's what they mean when they say that. But worship is actually so much more than that. And so I want to tell you a little story to help you understand what worship is. I remember when I was at school, I went with my pocket money and I bought a Game Boy. Now, I don't know if any of you know what that is. We're going to chuck a picture on the screen. Mine was specifically the Game Boy Advanced SP. It was a little square brick and you'd fold it out and you could play video games on it. And so one day it was the end of the term. And so we were allowed to bring our devices to school on this specific day. So you weren't allowed to take them every other day, but you could take them on this Day. And so I'm sitting there playing the original Mario game, having heaps of fun on my Game Boy. I felt so special because everyone was standing around me. They didn't have one yet and they thought I was super cool because I had a Game Boy. It was really cool. But here's the thing. My very best friend came over and sat next to me and he watched me play for a couple of minutes. And then he said, hey, Buckle, can I have a go. So then instantly in my head, I didn't say it out loud, the first thought I had was, no, how dare you ask to play my Game Boy? This is my Game Boy. I'm not going to share this with anybody else. I paid for it. I want to play with it. And then instantly I had this thought in my head, what's more important to me? Is my Game Boy more important to me or is my friend more important? To me. You see, I had to make a decision in that moment what I was going to put as more important in my life. Now, I did make the right choice. I gave the Game Boy to my friend to play because I realized that he is more important to me than what my Game Boy was. You see, every day we have to make choices about what we think is more important to us. Is it our friends? Is it our things? Is it our sport? Is it reading? What is more important? to you. But how about this question? What is the most important thing to you out of everything? Take a few moments and think about what that is. Maybe for some of you, the first thought you have is your family. They're the most important thing. Maybe for some of you, it's your friends. That's the most important thing. You see, the reason I ask that question is that's all that worship is. It's when you make something important in your life even more important than yourself. And so a little later on, we're going to take a look at the wise men and how they worshipped Jesus and also how you and I can worship Jesus this Christmas as well. But we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Welcome back. Look what we've done. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, I like that you went with different colors for this one, Isla. Is it blue and then pink? This is so cool. Did you do, look at, Isla is even staying inside the lines. I wish I could stay inside the lines. You're way too talented. Where should we put this? I think we put this on our third tree. And while I do that, how about we take a look at your arts and crafts? Oh, 
Welcome back. Well, look at that, we're finished. I know, that's it. We've got the Christmas story. So we've got the angels who see Mary and Joseph. Then we've got baby Jesus being born. Then we've got the shepherds and the angels. And then we've got today's animated Bible story, which is the wise men visit. Oh, the white, we haven't seen the animated Bible story yet. Let's go watch today's animated Bible story. Say hello to Jesus, the son of God, the savior of the world. And when Jesus was born, he was born in a barn wrapped in cloth and laid in a manger. Jesus was born in a town called Bethlehem in a land called Judea. Now the ruler of this land was a man named Herod and he was in another city called Jerusalem. But while he was there, some wise men who had traveled from the east came to him and said, where is the newborn king? The one who will be the king of the Jews. We saw his star in the sky, and so we've come to worship him. But when Herod heard that there was a new king born in Judea, he became angry. Herod gathered all of the important Jewish leaders and priests and asked them, where is this king meant to be born? They replied, we've always been told that the new king would be born in Bethlehem. And so Herod came up with a plan to trick the wise men to find out where Jesus was. He called the wise men into a private meeting and said, go to Bethlehem, search for the new king. And when you find him, come back and tell me where he is so that I can go and worship him too. But secretly, Herod wanted to go to Bethlehem to get rid of Jesus. And so the wise men traveled from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. And in the sky, the star that they had seen led the way. And it stopped over the house where Jesus was staying. They went inside and saw Mary and baby Jesus. They knelt down and worshipped him. They gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Later on, while they were sleeping, God spoke to them in a dream about Herod and told them to travel home via a different road. And so that's what they did. An angel also appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel warned him that Herod wanted to hurt Jesus and said, get up and take your family to Egypt. Stay there until Herod is no longer king. And so that very night, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus traveled to Egypt. They stayed there until Herod was no longer king and then traveled back to Judea. Then angel warned them that because of the new king, Herod's son, it wasn't safe for them to go back to Bethlehem. So instead, they made their home in a place called Galilee. And this is where Jesus grew up to become a man. The thing I love about this story, uh, these wise men make a decision not to just travel to the next town. They traveled a great distance. They saw this star in the sky signifying that a new king had been born and they made a choice. We are going to make this king more important in our lives than us. Yes, it's inconvenient to have to travel multiple days or weeks or months, however long it took. It would have been uncomfortable not being able to sleep in their normal bed, but on the road, sitting potentially on the back of a camel up and down, up and down, day after day, carrying all of their gear with them. They went out of their way and eventually they find Jesus. And the Bible says they worship him. You see, them worshiping Jesus was as simple as them with their actions saying, Jesus, King, you are more important in my life than me. And so they gave him gifts to honor him and to celebrate him. But they did this act to show Jesus, you are the most important person in our lives. And you see, this Christmas, we've got a lot of things that are going to be happening. You might be opening presents, you might be eating food, you might be hanging out with your friends and hanging out with your family. And all those things are amazing and they're important. And I'm going to be doing all of those things as well. I probably will eat too much food, let's be honest. But to me, the most important thing this Christmas is Jesus. And so I'm going to take time to worship him. That's where I take a moment and say, Jesus, how do you want me to live my life? I want to live your way. I want you to be the most important person in my life. I put you first. That's all worship is. It's when we put Jesus 
first. So that's our big point. That's what I want you to think about this Christmas. I want you to find a way in your speech and in your actions to make this decision to put Jesus first. Buckle, what is it time for? It's time for the Bible quiz. I hope you were paying attention because we're going to ask you some questions from today's Bible story. And for every question, we're going to give you two possible answers. If you think the first answer is correct, put your hands on your shoulders. No. I meant my head. On your head. First one on your head. Second answer is for your shoulders. Good job. Here we go with question number one. Where were the wise men from? Did they travel from the east or did they travel from the west? You've got five seconds. Okay, Isla, what's the answer? East. That's right, they traveled from the east, so hands on heads is correct. Here we go with question number two. They came across an evil king. What was the king's name? Was it King Herod or was it King Harold? You've got five seconds. That was a bit of a tough one, Isla. Did you pick up the answer? What is it? Herod? It was King Herod. That's right. Good job. That was a tougher question. So if you got that correct, give yourself a pat on the back. Here we go with question number three. How did the wise men find Jesus? Did they follow a compass or did they follow a star? You've got five seconds. Okay, Isla, what's the correct answer? Did they follow a star? They followed the star, that's right. Well done. Let's have a look at the next question though. They gave some presents to Jesus. What was one of them? Was one of the presents a new car or was it gold? You've got five seconds. Isla, what's the correct answer? Was it gold? It was gold, that's right. Hands on shoulders. There were no cars in the Bible. But here we go with the last question, question number five. An angel appeared to the wise men to save baby Jesus. What did the angel say? Did the angel say, go home a different way or go home the same way? You've got five seconds. Okay, Isla, what's the correct answer? Go home a different way. Go home a different way, that's right. And I love that we learned today that the wise men went to Jesus to worship him or put Jesus first. And we should worship Jesus too. That's right. My name is Buckle. And I'm Isla. And next week on The Link Show, oh, it's a little bit different. You guys are going to be watching the same episode as the older kids because we've got some bonus episodes coming. So if you want to watch those, even if you're on school holidays, you can head over to our YouTube channel to check it out. But thanks for watching us today. We'll see you next week on The, the Link, Link Show. Show. Bye. Bye.